Hey, I'm FTFE and welcome back to the channel that... Wait a minute, that... That felt wrong. <clears throat> hey, I'm FTFE and welcome back to the channel that does... No, that still didn't feel quite right. What's going on here? Hey, I'm FTF... Oh. Hey, I'm... Oh, what the hell? Hey, oh... We... Uh, hoy hoy! I didn't mean to say that. What's, I do feel better though. I better get this over. I don't want to hang around on this channel too long. Could you imagine being Planner Walk, an actual hobbit? Anyway, this is part two of episode 46 of Flurfs of Idiots, and I'm doing it over here to cover for Planner Walk while well, he is busy having second breakfast or something, I guess. You can find part one over on my channel. We're living on a disc floating through space with a tiny sun. Thanks for joining me as we continue our journey through the mind of Eric Dubay. Please don't make me go back in there, it's empty and dark. All right, let's get to it. One of your favorite little gotcha challenges is to request that we demonstrate how water can stick to a ball spinning at a thousand miles per hour. The implication is that water and everything else should fly off of it, like a child getting thrown from a merry-go-round. Well, it's very cute that you get overwhelmed by numbers with four digits in them, but in actuality, the Earth spins once per day. One time in 24 hours. Get on a merry-go-round and have someone push you one time around over 24 hours. Not a very thrilling ride, is it? The issue is that the Earth is really, really big. So if instead of using rotational velocity to describe a rotating body like a normal person, you try to use linear tangential velocity, you're going to get a pretty big number. But to be honest, it's still not really that big. It seems you're the one getting overwhelmed by your own globe figures, Dave. The alleged speed at which your tilting, wobbling, spinning space testicle Earth is actually supposed to rotate at the equator is 1,039 miles per hour. No, it's not rotating at 1,039 miles per hour. As you did with the earlier points Dave made, you've completely ignored what he said. You do not measure rotation in miles per hour. You use an angular velocity, or revolutions per minute. Its angular velocity at every point on the globe is 15 degrees per hour, and its RPM is 0 0.000694. Tangential velocity is not the same as angular velocity, you muppet. We are all well aware that this means one rotation per day, but thanks for continuing to speak to your audience like illiterate, petulant children and pretending we cannot understand such basic concepts. Well, actually, he's talking to you flat earth morons, whose IQ can be measured on a scale of 1 to 10, not his usual audience. His normal audience are used to learning about organic chemistry and the warping of space-time. You flat earthers are illiterate, petulant children incapable of understanding such concepts. Furthermore, this little water doesn't stick to a ball challenge is the strawiest straw man that was ever made of straw. The earth is huge. It generates an enormous gravitational field. That's why everything sticks to it. A ball is very tiny. It does not generate an enormous gravitational field, so things don't stick to it. So again, just like your last point, you cannot demonstrate water curving around and sticking to a ball, but wish to claim it only happens on a scale too large for you to recreate. That is no different from me claiming that unicorns exist, and when asked to show a single example of one, I cannot, but instead I say, unicorns do too exist, but they are macrocosmic invisible unicorns that cannot be observed. Invisible macrocosmic unicorns may exist in Dave's fantasy delusions, but if he cannot show a single demonstrable evidential example, it is by definition not scientific. What you've just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. I award you no points, and may God have mercy on your soul. No, that's not the same at all. We can demonstrate the effects of gravity, that there is an attractive force between masses that causes water to stick to Earth. The Cavendish experiment, which is repeated in universities all the time by first year physics students, demonstrates that attractive force exists in the magnitude we say it does. However, the only evidence for unicorns is that for some reason they are the national animal of Scotland. No, I'm not kidding. Go and look it up. Number six. Lots of you say that moonlight is cold. 
This is astonishing for a number of reasons. The first is that it is not related to any claim you could possibly be making in order to argue for a flat earth. But the second and much more important detail is that it is the perfect demonstration of the fact that you have no clue how science works. Some flat earth priest measured the temperature under the moonlight and then again under something providing shade. Wow, moonlight makes it colder, but does it? Shouldn't you add some element of control to your experiment? What's a control, you ask? You see, your measurement isn't evidence of anything. You now have to repeat the experiment when there is no moonlight to make sure that the moonlight was indeed the cause of the discrepancy in temperature. This is something you should have learned in middle school, but don't worry, I'll finish the experiment for you. Take the measurements again on a night with a new moon so that there is no moonlight. Look at that. You'll get the same result. So the moonlight absolutely wasn't the reason for the discrepancy in temperature. There are countless videos proving moonlight to be colder than moonshade, including peer-reviewed published experiments like in the Lancet Journal. Yeah, I can't find a single peer-reviewed science experiment that says the moonlight is cold. I honestly can't believe that this is still a thing flat earthers go on about. ...and perform their own research on this topic, but I have to point out the obvious flaw Dave seems to have overlooked while he was so busy talking down to his audience. Dave assumes we don't know what a control is, and insists that doing the experiment on different days during different phases of the moon will give different temperatures. Yes, Dave, of course it will, because it's a different day. Control experiments must be done simultaneously for them to be able to control for anything. That's not how that works at all. How do you know it's the moonlight causing the cooling effect if you don't do it when the moon isn't there or in different phases? You just proved you don't know what a control is with that very sentence, you fucking idiot. Now, look at this experiment by Where's Wally. He built a temperature sensor array and placed it in the moon shade as the moonlight swept over it during the night. These sensors noted no substantial change in temperature because moonlight isn't cold. Redoing the experiment under different conditions on a different day is anything but a control. Regardless, the experiment has been done countless times by different people with the same results. Moonlight, especially during the full moon, is colder than moonshade. No, no it fucking isn't. Eric, once again, please go to the remedial classroom. <laughs> <laughs> Sit down, shut up, no screwing around. This is detention, and apparently I pulled the short straw. So, I have to stay longer with you special students today. I wonder if Burger King is hiring. I can't keep doing this fucking job. All right, Eric, you think moonlight is cold. That's stupid. Do you know why? Eric, pay attention. No, I don't care that this is when you would normally be doing your yoga. Put that hemp yoga mat away and focus. What you are talking about, moonlight being cold, is a phenomenon called radiative cooling. During the day, when the Earth is facing the sun, it receives energy. When it's night, the Earth is facing the cold emptiness of space and it radiates that energy back out. Now, if you are in a shaded area at night or in the moon shade, as you would put it, that heat is stopped from escaping because there is something in the way causing shade. However, if you have an open sky or in the moonlight, then there is nothing blocking that heat from escaping, meaning the temperature would be lower in the moonlight than in the moon shade, but not because the moon emits cold light. That's fucking stupid and it violates the second law of thermodynamics. Now, I don't want to be here any longer, so I'm going to let you leave early. Don't tell anyone and I won't. Go on, get out. Right, is he gone? Where's the fucking whiskey? Oh my god, there it is. You did get one thing right, though, and that is that this, once again, has nothing to do with Flat Earth. It's funny how desperate you are to come up with ten things all Flat Earthers supposedly say, yet several of your examples are just random red herrings that have nothing to do with the shape of the Earth. No, it's still dumb shit that you say. Number seven. Many of you say some unintelligible nonsense about water flowing uphill, or that on the globe model, some rivers flow uphill. This one is so stupid that I genuinely can't believe any human could fall for it. You'll look at a globe and say that a river flows this way and that this is somehow uphill because you seem to think that up on the screen is some kind of universal up in space. Listen up, there is no up and down in space. This is not up, this is not down. To believe so would be as dumb as thinking that on Earth, whichever way you happen to be facing is north. No one on Earth is upside down or on their side. Up on Earth is away from the surface of the Earth, no matter where you are on the Earth. Here in yet another example of globe earthers trying to make common sense sound like nonsense, we hear that up is not up and down is not down. People live stuck all around a ball earth, but nobody is sideways or upside down. Another argument from ignorance, Eric. That should be your new name. 
Ignorance Eric. Globe believers hate thinking about people being sideways or upside down on their silly ball, so they just claim there is no such thing as up or down to calm their fevered brains. But regardless of their internal mind games, their ball model has people stuck at any and all of 360 degree inclinations around the thing, which means people would by necessity be walking around sideways and upside down relative to one another. Relative to one another, yes, but that's the thing. Up and down is relative. On Earth, down is towards the center of gravity and up is away from the center of gravity. And that's no problem because we have demonstrated gravity is a real thing. Likewise, Earth's many hundreds of rivers are constantly flowing north, south, east, west, and every other intermediary direction simultaneously, some of which flow for hundreds of miles with only the slightest of change in elevation, an absolute impossibility on a globe of given proportions. Says who? A dipshit who needs directions to feed himself so he doesn't gouge his eye out with a spoon by accident? No. Gravity is the answer that you are looking for. You might not like it, you definitely don't understand it, but your ignorance doesn't change the fact that it is the answer. Eight, many flat earthers remain dumbfounded by the idea that the earth is slightly closer to the sun in winter than in summer. As I've said before, winter up north is summer down south and vice versa. So your confusion is one of Northern hemisphere narcissism, but it is also one of complete ignorance. Here's the earth. Here's the light coming from the sun. Look at this portion, it hits the earth straight on. Look at this portion, because of the curvature of the earth, the light hits the surface at an angle and is therefore distributed around a greater area. Same amount of heat distributed around a larger area, lower average temperature. This is absolutely trivial to understand. Thanks, Dave. Nobody is dumbfounded or confused about these simple pseudoscientific claims you're making. Well, that's a lie, you are ignorant, Eric. You are, and all other flat earthers. Um, Vince, apparently they prefer the word retard. I? Oh, how very quaint. And I bet you're going to show how dumbfounded you are in the next few painfully slow sentences out of your stupid face. We're simply presenting the inconsistencies of your model to you in question form because we're used to thinking for ourselves and allowing others to think for themselves rather than condescendingly talking down to everyone from a pedestal like you're some infallible superior being armed with objective truth. The question is simple. How can the globe model purport the sun to be approximately 3 million miles closer to Earth in January, when winter and colder temperatures are found all over the Earth, than in July, when Earth experiences its warmest temperatures? Because, in the grand scheme of things, that 3 million miles is nothing. It really doesn't change the amount of energy the Earth receives as a whole that much. It's not my fault that you can't understand this, and all other things that involve maths. Dave claims due to the ball Earth's tilt, Different places receive different amounts of direct sunlight, and that is what produces the seasonal and temperature changes. It is! And how are you going to fuck that simple fact up? This makes no sense, however, because if the sun's heat travels over 90 million miles to reach the ball Earth, how could a slight tilt, a mere few thousand miles maximum, negate the sun's 90 million mile journey, giving us simultaneous tropical summers and Antarctic winters? <laughs> So you just ignored what Dave said and pleaded ignorance again. How do you think this is debunking Professor Dave? You're basically going, I don't understand, so you're wrong. Ha! Checkmate, Gloobers! The same rays that have traveled 93 million miles have to spread the same energy over a larger surface area, meaning less energy per square mile. No matter how big the sun is, the ray that reaches Earth still has to spread over a larger area if the Earth is tilted away. Number nine. Many flat earthers refer to the body of scientific knowledge as scientism. This is meant to be derogatory, implying that science is a religion. I'm very sorry, but saying this just demonstrates that you know nothing about science and probably didn't pass a single science class in high school. Science students are not told what to believe. They are shown how to perform experiments. Even in high school physics, students use blocks and ramps and balls and pendulums and carts and rulers and timers to derive Newton's laws and many other such pillars of science. So using the word scientism only serves to disqualify you from adult conversation regarding science. In actuality, it is quite clear why you adopt this viewpoint, because you just accept whatever you hear if it's what you want to believe. This is why your beliefs are baseless. Since you are incapable of doing anything other than repeating what you are told, you assume that others are doing the same thing, but they are not. Scientism is simply another way of saying pseudoscience. For example, when you claim that bodies of water can curve around, stick to objects, and display the shape of said objects upon their surface, like the alleged ball earth under your alleged curved oceans, but cannot give a single demonstrable example on a scale small enough to recreate, 
That is called scientism or pseudoscience. Number one, they are not the same. Pseudoscience is defined as science outside of the scientific method, whereas scientism is a stupid word that you fucking idiots made up. And if you understood anything about gravity, you would know that a small mass cannot create a large gravitational force of attraction that can stick water to a ball. I know you won't understand this ignorance, Eric, but Fg equals G M1 M2 over R squared answers all your questions about gravity. But that's math, and I know you don't get it. Likewise, when you claim that opposing pressure systems can exist side by side without a solid barrier between them, but cannot provide a single evidential example of this claim, you are spouting more scientism. Yeah, I covered that in part one. Oh look, there I am. If you haven't seen part one, then you should have, so... And to wrap things up, number ten, the piece de resistance. The claim that we have all been indoctrinated. That we have been brainwashed by schools, by the government, by NASA, by Freemasons, by Hollywood. Take your pick. Well, as I have demonstrated in this clip, you all say the same exact ridiculous things word for word like you're reciting the oath of the Flat Earth fraternity. So it's a rather silly accusation to be throwing around. The fact that you all say the same things is not surprising in the slightest. What do you do when you want to brainwash someone? You tell them they have already been brainwashed. Yes, globe earthers say flat earthers have been brainwashed, and flat earthers say globe earthers have been brainwashed. Yeah, but only one of those two are capable of tying their own shoelaces. Globe earthers are simply advocating the first version of reality they were taught as little children. Meanwhile, all flat earthers were actually taught that exact same version of reality as children. The only difference being that they went back as adults and did their due diligence in researching the opposing arguments without any bias or cognitive dissonance to see whether or not what they were taught as children still stood up to the critical scrutiny of a discerning adult. No, the difference is you failed at high school science, never understood anything, and then heard a fucking moron on YouTube who said, the earth flat bro, and you went, seems legit to me. That's because all flat earthers combined have the same IQ as a unicorn fart. To put it bluntly, flat earthers are all dumb as fuck. And that is all the stupid that I can take. I hope you've enjoyed this two-parter video taking down the crown prince of flat earth. Make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to Planet Work and me over on my channel. And remember, stupidity is not a right. Fight the flat earth. Fight the flat. Fight the flat. Fight the flat.